Hello, my name is Brandon Blackman. I work for Elkhart County Parks Department here at Bonneville Mills in Bristol, Indiana. Um, how many people have been here before? So what do you guys think that this area was like in 1835? In 1835, this area um, primarily was made of forests, um, probably consisting of more oak trees than anything else, just because more of Indiana was, all, was mostly oak forests. Um, but to get here, they would have had to cross the rivers with horse and wagons. Um, they didn't have roads back then, they just had a small trail. So it was a lot more difficult to travel. So right behind me, you can see a waterfall. Um, this is a man-made waterfall. This waterfall was built by Edward Bonney, the guy that purchased the land in about 1835. And he wanted to construct a town in his name basically around this area, but that kind of failed. Um, so instead he built, he had a grist mill built and he had to build this dam so he, he could use the mill race, which is just over there. The mill race is what brings the water to our grist mill. Does anyone know what a grist mill does? So a grist mill is a mill that basically grinds products like corn or wheat corn goes into cornmeal and the wheat goes into flour. Um, we also grind buckwheat and rye and then spelt. They all make their own types of flour. So we will be going and checking out the mill right now. So what do you guys think this is right behind me? If you, have, if you said it was a windmill, you are correct. Um, also, what do you guys think it did back in the 1800s and early 1900s? So the windmill was primarily used for the drinking water and the cooking water. Um, it pulled straight from the water table, not out of the stream. So it was clean water and it was Basically, as long as they didn't drain the whole well, it would be replenished by the rainwater. So it was continuously refilling and with the stream here. So right behind me is our grist mill. Um, the words on it say Bonneville Mills. Um, in our English language, what does the S on the back side of mills stand for? If you, if you were thinking it stood for more than one mill, you would be correct. Um, this area used to have more than one mill. We had the grist mill, and then we also, by these red control gates, would have had um, a sawmill. The sawmill would have been built first to help build the grist mill, um, because they would have needed lumber for the grist mill. Um, we also think that the sawmill was one of those portable mills. So basically when they get to an area they would build the mill the sawmill and then once they were done they'd just take it down. Um, as far as we know it was gone before the 1900s. So um, also it says established in 1832 and that's when Edward Bonney would have brought, bought the property. Um, the grist mill here was built in 1837. Um, so this thing behind me, can you guys tell me what it is down below? It is, this thing is called a turbine or a turbine. Um, so basically you got these gates, this sits underneath our mill and this is what makes the whole operation run. So up, when we're upstairs on the grinding floor, we have a wheel that we turn, and that will open up these gates. That wheel is connected right to this gear right here. And when this turns, it will open up my gates. 
and we got a slot over here that have no gates so you can see right in and when they're open the water will come in and hit my fins and make this giant wheel turn this giant water wheel and when this turns the water goes in hits and falls through the middle when it falls through the middle it creates a vacuum or a cyclone um, the same type of cyclone that you'd get when you drain a bathtub or a sink and it makes that makes a very powerful suction which turns this up here can anyone comment down below and tell me what they think that little top piece is called it is called a crown coupling so because it looks like a king's crown and it connects to the drive shaft and the drive shaft is what powers the whole mill so right here in front of me are three examples of millstones and if you we also did another video last week on millstones and I'll link it up here so basically to grind you have to have millstones that are the same size so this one and this one would not be compatible because they're not the same size but the two end ones would be very compatible so this would be your bottom stone and that one would be your top stone over there or vice versa and the bottom stone does not move but the top stone is um, called the runner stone and as it goes around and around all these grooves there will be grain sitting in it and as the top stone goes over it, make, it um, makes your flour or cornmeal and one is convex and one is concaved and that allows it to be able to be pushed out to the edges here and then it comes off and then we bag it up and sell it how much do you guys think this would weigh so they weigh approximately 2,000 pounds or one ton um, it can be a range of 1,800 to 2,000 pounds so they're very heavy and just unlike our last video last week about millstones you can tell that they are not one continuous piece like this one is this one is one continuous piece there is no brakes and that's how that one was made this one these are our French burr stones that we talked about and it was much easier for the settlers to move these stones because they would come in pieces and the pieces are not 1800 pounds each so makes it a whole lot easier on wagon <laughs> so right behind me is more is the main part of the mill race so this is where it enters the mill and when it goes inside the mill it hits that turbine that we talked about earlier and that's how we power up the mill um, also once it enters the mill of course it has to exit the mill it exits the mill by the tail race so the mill race is entrance tail race is right over here and it is the exit for the mill for the water that we use um, and then over here is our dam and this helps dam up the mill race basically and helps us get the right amount of water that we need so one more thing about the dam here is if we would open it up it would drain this mill race in about 15 minutes 15 to 20 minutes and then as soon as we closed it it would be back filled up like it is right now in about 15 to 20 minutes that's how much water goes through here um, on our next video we will be going inside the mill um, so stay tuned for that video this will be this is part one that would be part two thank you for watching